and Father Rich Elmer, President Emeritus of Catholic Central High School. And to con celebrate this Mass is Father Mike Brenteo. He's the Director of Spirituality and Mission at Catholic Central. The theme of our Mass today is Jesus Wants to Be Our Good Shepherd. And so we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you. My brothers let us and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, almighty ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading, Peter's preaching gets amazing results. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ this Jesus whom you have crucified. Now when they heard this, they were about to cut to their they were they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. In the second reading, Jesus as our shepherd is no guarantee of freedom from suffering. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, 
this is a grace before God. For to you this has you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me. Alleluia, alleluia. In the gospel, Jesus makes his claim to be our good shepherd. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him and the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them and the sheep will follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. What a holy and hopeful thought in these times in which we live. Jesus is here for us. In our world's history, there have been times similar to COVID-19 when God showed his displeasure with humanity using flood and fire plague, and virus to convince people to conversion and repentance. And the Israelites had no Jesus to turn to for love, for hope, for support, for courage, as we do today. Their God was to be feared and obeyed. Not that humanity today has no cause for fear of God. It's just that we have a good shepherd and his mother to turn to. Let's just look at our country today. Since Roe versus Wade, over 60 million innocent infants have been victims of an abortionist knife or other cruel instrument. There is an increasing acceptance, support, and promotion of same gender marriages today. There's a disregard for God's Ten Commandments, His natural law and even his existence. There's a lack of compassion for family members, for neighbors in need. There's a corporate and personal greed is commonplace today. And the list goes on. But let's look at the good that's happening today as well. Many families these days are getting to know and love one another better than ever before, doing it through conversations through playing together, praying together, praying the rosary, 
attending TV masses, making spiritual communions. Individuals are having an increased or renewed desire for the Holy Eucharist and for confession. It's nice to see the good coming out of COVID-19, but if history repeats itself, then once the danger is minimal or over, humans will slip back to their former ways. However, keeping connected to our Good Shepherd will keep us on the right path, and we can help others do the same. We know, of course, there are many Christians who aren't following and don't want to follow their shepherd. What can you do to get them started? Just remember, it's in times of crisis that people are most receptive to the help of others. We can all make old-fashioned phone calls to give their words of encouragement and support and advice. For some, social media is a possibility, and so is communication technology, like Zooming. I had extended family members living in different parts of the, of the United States and Canada attend my Easter Sunday Mass by a Zoom meeting, and will do the same next Sunday for Mother's Day. And the thought occurred to me that extended families, far and wide, could use the same medium to pray the Mary's Rosary, a family rosary, every day, every week. May, of course, is the month of Mary, our Blessed Mother. And just two days ago, the bishops of the United States and Canada consecrated our countries to our Blessed Mother. To conclude, the last words of today's responsorial psalm are, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. For years to come translates into for all eternity. The prayer I was asked to write at, for my 90th birthday has a similar theme. The primary purpose for our existence is to get to heaven. The richest nourishment for our journey is the Holy Eucharist. Our special spokesperson is our Blessed Mother. Jesus and Mary, please be with us now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Please stand for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, he God not made, consubstantial of the Father, to him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came out from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, it was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and can be made new. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Island. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in the world of his resurrection. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the world to judge the living and the dead, and as his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now with faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, let us offer our petitions to his Father. Let us pray that our religious and civil leaders will seek the wisdom of Jesus, our Good Shepherd, with all of their important decisions during this pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians during this time will grow in their faith in Jesus Christ we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Catholic Central Community will remain strong in the virtues of goodness, 
discipline, and knowledge, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have been directly affected by the coronavirus will be comforted by the Holy Spirit and by our prayers and sacrifices offered up on their behalf, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the lonely, the forgotten, that we will reach out and minister to them as true disciples of Jesus Christ, the shepherd, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls in purgatory, that through our remembering of them in our prayers, they, that they may at last enter into the eternal home prepared for them by Jesus our Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's continued blessing on Father Elmer on today, his birthday, and may the joy of the gospel always permeate his soul. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We've offered our petitions to you, Lord, in a spirit of faith, of hope, and of love. Please answer them according to your will and to our benefit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. And Lord, Lord accept us. Wash me from my sins, cleanse me from my iniquities. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right in us. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, though you, through your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he, at the time <clears throat> he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Bishop, and all the clergy, religious, and all God's faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Philip and St. James, St. John Vianney, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free me by this your most holy body and blood from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are really present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself totally to you. Help me never to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. I thank you for tuning in to my birthday mass, and I thank Father Buenteo for on celebrating with me. I am making an intention right now that you and your loved ones be remembered in my daily masses, that the Holy Family may keep all of you holy, healthy, and joyful. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.